because you go so deep on some of these scammers. It's like it's so important because there's so many people that just they don't really understand what's going like the FTX thing, for example, the best one, because I was so in the dark about this thing. I was like, what is happening? Like, what are they doing? Try to break it down for us. Like, what, first of all, what is a, it's a crypto exchange, right? So yeah, how, does, how right. does that work? So the first question is when you get in, when you learn about crypto, you're like, it's this magic internet money. Magic. How do you get some of that? How do you get some of that magic <laughs> right. internet money? Uh, well, you have to go somewhere to buy it. And so it's a crypto exchange is where you kind of go, you put your fiat on your dollars or whatever, euros or whatever, and you put it into this crypto exchange. They have a bank and they work with that bank. Then they exchange that money for some type of crypto token. There's a lot of different tokens out there. And explain tokens, because I don't understand tokens. I know there's crypto and there's tokens. Like, what is the difference between the two? Yeah, tokens like is the individual, you can think of currency, right? So it's like the okay. individual. So Bitcoin is, you, know, you have Bitcoin, then you have, it's one of the cryptocurrencies. You have Ethereum, you have Dogecoin, you have SafeMoon, you have FTT, which is what FTX was using as their native token. So a lot of these guys, you'll start a crypto exchange, and then you'll launch your own token that people can invest in, sort of like they're investing almost in your crypto exchange. And so that was actually one of the ways that FTX really perpetuated their fraud. I, I can break it down. How much do you know about the FTX situation? Let's break it down for people that don't know yeah. about it. So Let's do it. So okay. FTX was this uh, crypto exchange located out in the Bahamas, which is a great place to put your— uh, Why do they do it in the Bahamas? Because it's unregulated. So the problem with doing stuff in the United States or, you know, some something like Europe or something like that is you're you are subject to all these regulations which require you to be a little more careful. Oh, those are pesky. Yeah, Get they're, they're annoying. The so like, like that. the famous example is like Coinbase is in America and they have to file all these forms. They have to be they're a regulated entity. They're a publicly traded company. So they have to report everything. So if you're offshore, you can kind of not do any of that. You can play fast and loose. And, you know, for some people, they think that's better. They can offer, let's say, like 100x leverage. Like you have a dollar. I'll let you trade with $100. And that's that's going to be like one reason you come to my offshore exchange. I can offer you more leverage than the guys who are like, you know, Coinbase or something like that. Right. So FTX launches, let's start with who Sam Bankman-Fried is. He's kind of at the center of all of this. Sam Bankman-Fried is this guy who comes, he's the son of two uh, Harvard lawyers. Then he comes up, prep school. He's kind of like um, built for success, right? He goes to MIT, goes to Jane Street as this quantitative trader. And then he goes into the crypto space and he launches FTX. Or, He's sorry. very young, right? How old is he? I think he was. He, he is young. I'm not. Maybe you can look that up, Jamie. Thirty one. Um, he launches Alameda Research first, which is just like this trading firm, which basically the idea here is we have some ideas. We're going to raise a little bit of money and we're going to do these trades that are profitable in crypto. So the way he first made his money was he did something where he bought. Uh, Bitcoin in uh, the U.S. and then he sold it on these Japanese exchanges where it was worth more. So this, there, he was uh, arbitraging this difference in prices. And then after he made his money that way, he launches FTX in 2019. And that's a crypto platform where, honestly, you can make a lot more money than just with a trading firm. So FTX quickly skyrockets in popularity. They bring on people like Tom Brady to promote it. Larry David in the Super Bowl, they kind of get buy-in from all these big sort of names and also repu reputable people like BlackRock, Sequoia Capital. They all invest in this guy. Kevin O'Leary famously promoted it for like $18 million. They gave him $18 million to promote it? He says he lost it on the platform. He says the $18 million was on FTX or whatever, and he never, he never got a dollar out of it. But that was the, what the deal was for. So they were paying everybody to promote this FTX ex crypto exchange. And the idea was, is this is the next, uh, the next big thing, right? And this is where you're going to make money. There was a lot of fear of missing out or FOMO in the, in the markets at the time. You know, everyone thought, oh, cryptos, you have to get in now, right? Because if you get in now, you're going to make some money. And so people invested in FTX thinking that this is going to be uh, 
a safe platform. This kid is smarter than everyone else. He's the son of Harvard lawyers. We just sort of can't lose. And nobody paid attention to some of the red flags that were going on until ultimately it was too late. It turns out he was pilfering FTX, the customer deposits, and was using it in Alameda Research, which was his trading firm, to try to make extra money, and he lost it. And so this is all because it's unregulated? Like, if he was doing this, like, Coinbase can't do this. Is that correct? Yeah, Coinbase is much more heavily scrutinized. They actually have to file uh, with the SEC. They have to say what they have, where they're putting their money. They're subject to more regulation about, like, how they take care of customer deposits. One of the big things with FTX was they told people, hey, you put your money with us. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to move it. That's what FTX said in their terms of service. So one of the really... Uh, big problems was they actually weren't doing that, but nobody knew because nobody had to look at their books. Like it was very opaque. Nobody knew what was going on behind the scenes. So even though they said like, we're not going to touch your money, as soon as you deposited Bitcoin, I mean, I talked to some of the insiders at Alameda. They said they had this uh, backdoor system to where they could see you, Joe, deposit a Bitcoin on FTX. They could grab that Bitcoin and start trading with it immediately. Wow even though they were never supposed to be able to touch your money, obviously. That was the whole point. It's like, you deposit with us, we're not going to do anything with your money. It's your money. It's like a deposit, like we're, it's almost like a bank. Like you deposit right. with a bank. Your bank uh, isn't supposed to go ahead and take your money and go start trading with it unless, you know, obviously we have FDIC insurance, stuff like that. But like they didn't have that. They had, they just take your money, go trade with it. And that's where the disaster started.